Oh, wait, Lord. All right. Good evening, family. Welcome to our Monday evening uh, prophetic ministry. And uh, we have uh, myself and Elisma Jan. And I want to read you a scripture tonight here in Joel chapter 2. I want to read verse 19 to find it. It says here, The Lord will answer and say this to his people, Behold, I will send you grain and new wine and oil, and you will be satisfied by them. I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations. And so the Lord is giving us a promise tonight that he's giving us grain, he's giving us new wine, and he's giving us oil. And so the grain has to do with the word of God, his direction, the life of God is coming into you. Remember Jesus said, I think it's in Matthew 4, 4, where he said, you will not live uh, from uh, just food and, and bread, but you actually will live from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so therefore God gives us the grain, that's the word of God. Jesus said, I'm the bread. And then he gives us the new wine. Now, a lot of people have different ideas. When you think about new wine, you probably think about the Holy Spirit. And that is so because uh, in Acts, I think it's 2.13, uh, the people say, oh, they look like they've got new wine in them because they were drunk nine o'clock in the morning. But yes, the, the whole thing about the new wine, uh, the new wine is the new kingdom of God. Now, in the time of the Israelites, they were in the law. And so uh, they had a legal system in which they lived their lives. They didn't have a personal relationship with with Jesus and with God. And so Jesus said to them, you can't put new wine into old uh, uh, wine bags. You need to have new wine bags to put the new wine in. And so when you make you a new creation in Christ, you knew, and he can put his new wine in you. And Jesus said the following, he says, the kingdom of God is inside of us. And so that's that new wine. And so the Lord says tonight, I'm giving you the, my word. I'm giving you my new wine. So I'm putting my kingdom inside of you. And that also means he puts his Holy Spirit inside of you. And the kingdom of God is inside of you. So out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. And then thirdly, he says, I'm giving you oil. And so that oil is the oil of joy. It's the oil uh, of the anointing that breaks every yoke that sets us free. And so that's that's uh, what I want to encourage you with tonight is to receive. So the whole time while you Lord, I receive your word. Lord, I receive your kingdom into my life. I receive the, the anointing oil that come and rests upon my life. Awesome. So now uh, we already got Erwin there and we got Jenna Lee. Is there more people on the that we have? Okay. Uh, are they coming? Okay. I, I just wanted to talk a little bit so we can get going. But um, I think I'm going to ask our leader and Amy to start with Jenna Lee. Let me just do a prayer. Lord, I pray for everyone that's coming on on the session, Lord, I pray that your word will come and you will you will touch him. Lord, I pray uh, for the, the level of the anointing of God to arise up and now in the name of Jesus. And so, uh, Lord, we bring Jenna Lee before you. Lord, thank you that you touch her. Lord, thank you that every need in her life is met, whether it's finances, whether it's healing, whether it's breakthrough. Lord, thank you for your Holy Spirit that comes and rests on her and that you make her brand new. We bless her. Amen. Okay, hello, this is Alida. We're going to prophesy to Gina Lee Johnson. Okay, um, so uh, immediately when I started, you know, asking God what word he wants to bring to you, he reminded me of the scripture. So I just want to read the scripture to you. So a man born blind receives his sight. Now as Jesus like birth, and his disciples asked him saying, Rabbi, who sent this man or his parents that he was born blind? And then Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sent, but the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. So the message is, is that but the, that the works of God should be revealed in Jenna Lee. So I really feel that the plans that God has for Jenna Lee is of future and of hope and it's of good. And I just see like all of these flowers coming out all over her body and the glory of God will be revealed through her. And that Jenna Lee is here so that the, the works of God can be revealed inside of her. And I just see how, how it's like a very big light. And when people come to see the revealing of it, they get touched and they get turned to God. They receive salvation because God used Jenna Lee to reveal himself to them. So God will use you, Jenna Lee. And I just 
pray that God's heart and his whole mind will be manifested inside of you and that his works will be revealed in and through you. Amen. Amen. Jenna Lee, God loves you so much. And here's a super cool verse in John 4, verse 18. It says that there is no fear in love. Love drives out fear. Um, Jenna Lee, God loves you so much and you are so special to the Lord. Um, Jenna Lee, the Lord has called you to live in and be um, courageous in him. And Jenna Lee, the Lord has a magnificent plan for you. Um, the picture God showed me was you were um, 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 you busy like um um I think I think it's called origami and and how you were um just making all these beautiful pieces and how you were communicating with people um in a completely unique way because God has called you to be unique um His love um through through your creativity I really feel the Lord is going to move you and the Lord is going to touch you and speak to you in so many incredible ways that you're going to share to people His abundant love. The Lord is placing an incredible poem, a song, and a testimony in your heart that you are going to speak, sing, and even shout out in joy. Thank you, Lord, for the incredible anointing that you've placed in Jenna Lee's life. I just declare, Lord, healing. Thank you, Lord, that all the shackles of shame and fear is off her, and you've placed a beautiful, magnificent crown of your purity and your joy. Thank you, Lord, that she's being filled up with faith right now, and she is going to move mountains. In the name of Jesus, amen. Awesome. Jenna Lee. Uh, we bless you and we just declare that God's life is resonant on your life. Uh, God also bless you, Shanae and RC. It's awesome uh, to have you as part of our family. So next is Irwin. Uh, so uh, Irwin, uh, the Lord uh, is just uh, on you. And I just see how the Lord is just flying. His, it's like a, a movement of his wind. You know, sometimes when uh, I pray, I see this light and I just go from one side to the other side. And the one day I was asking the Lord, what was it? And the Lord just said that there's these angels that he's sending out and they on the move and they, they are preparing uh, the way. And I felt that the Lord is releasing angels into your life. Uh, the Lord is uh, preparing the way uh, and he's establishing you. And so uh, we in the past wanted to uh, uh, fall to the left or fall to the right and you were not always established. And there was a confusion that came to you. I felt that the Lord says, son, I'm establishing you in this time. I'm putting a shield of righteousness around you. Uh, I'm putting my, my armor of light upon you. And so there's a protection that the Lord is putting on you. And in the past, there was this moments of unwiseness of this moments of confusion that came in your life and the enemy was able to steal from you. But I felt that the Lord says, uh, I'm going to give you the anointing to be able to retain and to build what I'm giving to you. And even as you make progress in your business, progress in your life and progress in your relationships, uh, there's going to be a, a building and a, and a building up. And I see layers upon layers upon layers that's compacted in your life as the Lord is just laying that foundation and he's building up. Uh, Erwin, the Lord is so proud of you uh, for sticking with it and staying with his plan and his word for your life. God bless you, Erwin. I mean, Erwin, so um, I see you walking on the beach and you just, you're very relaxed and it's almost like you are in God's rest. And as you look down, you see all these beautiful pebbles and God is just showing you these beautiful things. And it's almost like you're picking up the missing pieces of what you are looking for. Those missing pieces in your heart, those questions you have, those missing pieces that you, you know, you sometimes, you know, you just feel there's something that's not fitting. Then God is going to give you that. Go into his rest. Go into him. You know, there's this verse, there's verses that say says in the Bible, you need to hide in him. You need to go in him. And that is when those missing pieces will just complete your puzzle, your heart puzzle inside of you. Be blessed that way. Okay, thank you. The next one is for Aleta. But please, guys, comment. We'd love to read your comments. Um, I didn't bring my script tonight, so I'll just ask the Holy Spirit to give way. <laughs> anyway, Aleta, the Lord loves you and he cares about you. The picture that I saw was the Lord came and he squeezed you so, so much up until you just started crying and laughing and the joy of the Lord fall upon you. And then I saw, because of that, a lot of healing started to take place. Um, I, I, it feels like you're a very, very serious person. But don't forget joy. Joy is one of the uh, fruits of the Spirit. 
to that, uh, especially when you've got a challenging day and the joy of the Lord comes and you're just joyous. You forget about the negative things. You tend to be more positive. So I really encourage you, just ask the Lord, go with the Lord, work with the Lord so that the joy of the Lord can work in you. Just relax, just release a bit and be filled with the joy of the Lord. Be blessed, Aleta. Okay, Aleta, so um, yes, the Holy Spirit showed me like, I don't know if you know what Sparaletta is. I like the raspberry flavor. Um, well, Sparaletta is like a pop drink uh, with like, sugar and lots of things in it and when you shake it usually before you open it and you shake it a lot and then you open it like it spouts out it spills everywhere and it's like booming out like a tiny volcano <laughs> and i just really feel that when you out of your own ability try to shake yourself up and get yourself ready for the day you know out of your own trying to motivate yourself it's like this tiny cool drink you're trying to shake and then you open it and the day starts and then everything comes out but i mean eventually the can or the bottle starts getting empty and you know then eventually somewhere you feel oh drained and oh i'm tired and i just really feel that god says don't plug yourself into me get a hose put it in my throne and then that spar later will never ever stop coming out because i have all the you know flavors um, and I really feel that God says, when you plug into me, when you connect yourself to me, when you are one with me, you know, keeping yourself connected through the whole day, you won't run out of energy. And when you feel like you would, when you remind yourself, I'm running out of energy, but I'm, I'm like connected to him and I'm, he's my main source, you know, God's glory will flow through. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And later, yes, God has everything that you need. God has all the um, provision and all the flavors that you need in your life. And God loves you and he shall provide for you. God bless you. And later, this next word is for Yaku. Yaku, God loves you so much. And while I was praying for you, the picture God showed me was a palm tree. And I really feel the Lord says he's giving you an incredible victory in your life. And the Lord says he's anointing you with inc an incredible business idea or a business dream or, or vision. And the Lord is just giving you clarity for your business. I just feel the Lord is just anointing you mightily. And then the next thing the Lord showed me was um, at a very young age, the Lord has given you a mantle of, of victory in your life that you're going to lead people to Christ and, and lead people into that promised land. But and then everyone, now again, the enemy would say to you, no, you don't have that anymore. I feel the Lord says you do still have that mantle of victory and the Lord is activating that in your life. And the Lord says that you are going to overflow and wherever there is any emptiness in your life or in your family's lives, you are going to just usher the presence of God there. And Jesus is just going to give an incredible outflowing of his presence. Um, Yaku, God loves you so much. God bless you. Hello, Yaku. So uh, I saw a picture of your whole family tree in a dry land and how the Lord come and he uproot your whole family and he, uh, he, he plants them. In, in a land where there's a lot of water, there's green grass, it's fertile, and it can grow. And there's, uh, you know, uh, everything necessary for everyone in your family to fulfill what God has called them to be. And I felt that the Lord says, son, I'm about to bring a shift in you, not only a shift in your mind and your thoughts and your perception of God, but also a shift in your spirit, man, where the Lord is putting a power inside of you and i see like this big old bodybuilder you know the honor trust negative bodybuilder now that the lord is putting in your spirit man and so the lord is uh, uh building you to be like a man of faith uh, but then i also see there's a physical shift that's coming into your life because of the spiritual spiritual shift that you have done and so uh i i don't know in what church you are but i felt there's a there's a church shift there's a church connection uh shift there's a covering uh of the anointing of god shift in your life we need to honor and you come, become part of that body uh where there's a lot of anointing and there's a lot of the flow and there's a lot of vision uh then in that context uh, your family can grow and uh, there's not a ceiling over them. There's not a restriction on them, uh, but it's unlimited and the Lord can bless them. And so uh, the Lord wants to use you in, in the work of ministry, but he also wants to use your family members. And so uh, you're going to lead them in that. God bless you, Yaku. Amen. The next word is for Yannick Tucker. Okay, so I see this pink like go and as it's getting mixed i see the glitter falling in and more glitter and more glitter and more glitter and um it's put in the oven and it comes out in this beautiful pink glittery cupcake with the icing and it's beautiful 
and you are that beautiful cupcake and God is mixing his glory inside of you as you move into him, as you read more of his word, as you pray more, as you worship more, you are forming into this beautiful, glittery, glory cupcake of God. So just keep on going, entering into God's presence, entering into his anointing and know that you are one of God's a magnificent glory carriers in the world and you are going to just let that glory flow over in you and you are going to touch people's lives with that glory that God is just mixing inside of you with you spending time with him. Be blessed, you it. Are you on it? The Lord loves you. Very special to him. Um, the picture that I saw was you were in a, it's all, uh, almost like the cyclone where you were flying around and around and around and then you just closed your eyes and you said, oh, well, let me just act like this is a super tube and you started to enjoy it. And when the Lord came and he filled you up, when he picked you up, your whole mindset changed. So it's going to start with you changing the way you perceive things, the way you see things. So if you change the way you see it, you're going to change the circumstances you're in. Not necessarily by walking away, by giving up, by quitting. That is not the answer. The answer is change the way you see things. And then you just ask, Holy Spirit, come and interfere. Come and change my way, how I perceive things. Come and just scrabble everything around. Because I see you you like to be organized. And just ask, Holy Spirit, come and mess a bit the things around so that my perspective can fall into the correct placing. Be blessed. Okay, thank you so much, you and Tucker. This next word is for Corey McKenzie. Corey, um, yeah, so the Holy Spirit showed me how you were on this boat and you were just, you were fishing on this one side of the boat the whole time and Jesus is telling you, Corey, go and fish on the other side of the boat. And you're like, it's the same ocean, whether it's this side of the boat or whether it's that side of the boat. But you're like, okay, I'll give it a try. And so you took your hooks and your net and you threw it in the other side of the boat. And then you got so many fish, fish, you couldn't even count the amount that was on that. It's just like the story where Jesus you know, came at the shore and his disciples were busy fishing. They were fishing on the one side for I don't know how long. And then Jesus said, fish on the other side. And I think he, they thought, like, really, this guy? And then they caught fish and then they knew it was Jesus. And so I really feel that God says, fish your attention away from the natural and into the supernatural. Because I, I just hear God saying, you get so caught up in what is going on around you in your circumstances and you forget what I am doing in the supernatural. Because I don't work just in the natural. I work in the supernatural as Amen. well. And if you could see the plans and everything I'm busy with in the supernatural, your way of thinking would change dramatically. And so fix your eyes on me and focus your thoughts on the supernatural. Amen. Amen, Corey. Yes, God loves you. And he's really, you're walking in a supernatural light. Um, Carly, this is an interesting picture the Lord showed me. So the picture God showed me was you golfing. And um, I, I don't really know anything about golfing, but I do know for a fact that you can't really, you, sh you should try your best not to hit someone with <laughs> Especially like if, you, if there's no person to hide you or something. The picture God showed me was you were about to play a game with a few friends or something. And then in the very beginning of the whole experience, you kind of hit someone behind you with your golfing stick. Um, and then throughout the whole, everything was fine afterwards. But throughout the whole way, um, during the game, you just felt so disappointed because you hit that one person and you just feel this guilt and this, and you just, you just feel like, a bad person, even though it's already sorted and already fine. And, and then you feel like you're going to, need to hurt someone and hit someone again. And I felt that the Lord says that through the blood of Jesus, that you are clean and nothing will, and, and that the enemy can't attack you and you are not going to make any mistakes through him. And, and even if you do, Jesus still loves you and he's protecting you with his love. And I, I just feel the Lord says he's just placing in more joy in your life. So don't worry. Um, don't let the enemy um, it might give you fears that you're going to do it again. You are growing with God at this time and you're going to do miraculous things for his kingdom. And Corley, I just want to say that you are so beautiful. You are so beautiful in the image of God. God loves you so much. God bless you, Corley. Okay. 
Awesome. Corey, thank you. I see these awesome people that's on here tonight. about two minutes per person and then when we've ministered to 15 people we're gonna give a corporate prophetic word that we believe the lord is release, releasing on the earth today and i want you to to stay for that and so if you look at your number where your name is then you'll know okay you can calculate it's about two minutes on on each one of those so you can kind of have an idea uh, when your word is going to come up so this next word is for Ntabileng. And so uh, uh, Ntabileng, I just really felt that the Lord is releasing an evangelistic anointing upon your life. And the Lord says, I'm breaking through with resources in your life. And so do not fear, uh, do not uh, confess with your mouth that I'm a failure and I'm not going to have the finances uh, to bring forth that ministry. But the Lord says, I'm raising you up as a mighty uh, person with that anointing of God to bring thousands of people into the kingdom of God. Uh, and so the Lord is giving you all the tools that you need. I also see uh, uh, different business people that connect with you and that support you and help you. And uh, many, many people that are working, people that are struggling, struggling are going to be set free because of the amazing ministry that the Lord is doing through your life. God bless you. And I want you, even as you're there, I want you to receive that fire of God as he releases it on you right now. God bless you in doubling. I mean, Tabeling, I see there's, there's just blockages that's, 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 you know, it's like almost uncertainties in your life. So I just want to pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you just remove those blockages in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the next word is for Driki. Driki, I see you walking and you, it's like in a, in a white room and it's, it's um, long curtains. And as you walk, it's like when you learn God. And God just whispers the sweet voice with a sweet voice into your heart he really speaks to your heart it's almost like he is it's like a healing room where he, he takes you in and you and him alone time those places in in you know inside of you your thoughts your mind where only god knows your heart go open up to him and just go into deep worship with him and let him just heal those places inside of you go enjoy that quiet time with the lord and those whispers and that purity that just that purity and that grace god loves you and he his mercies are new every morning, and you are perfect in His eyes. Be blessed, Ricky. Hi, yes. Ricky. The Lord loves you. He cares about you. Um, the picture I saw was of uh, kneading dough. Now, first, if you don't need it, knead. I think that's what you call it. Anyway, um, so if you don't need the dough, you can't bake with it. You can't use it. But it's quite a tough job to get it done. Now, that's. Where the Lord is busy with you, uh, molding and shaping your faith so that you can be presented um, as pure as gold. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And then the other thing is uh, renew your mind. Romans 12 says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then go read Isaiah 11, where the Lord said uh, he was clothed with the seven spirits of God. So just go and... Renew your mind to the Spirit of God so that when you go through these, these circumstances that you ask, Lord, clothe me with your Spirit so that you have the correct mindset, the correct approach to all of the challenges. And then suddenly you will start to see the reason behind it. You will start to feel the need for it. And then when you get that understanding, you will say it is worth it. But in the meantime, it's challenging. Be blessed, Dri. Okay, thank you so much, Dri. Yes, this word is for John Maber. Okay, um, John, um, so you know with a car it has its tires and eventually when you need to buy new ones, it's because like the tires like look like no die. So the thread is almost like to nothing and you need to get new ones. And I really feel God is saying, I want to give you new tires. And it, has, it is at a price of surrender. So, you know, in order for God to give you new resources, in order for God to label you up, to revive you, you need to say, God, yes, I surrender. You just do it. And just as the angel appeared to Mary and said, you will be pregnant and the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. It only happened when she said, let it be unto me according to the Lord's will. So, John, just say, let it be, let it be unto me according to 
the word of God. When you say yes, God can really start releasing the resources. And you know, new ground you will be going on with these tires. New places you will be going and new people you will be coming in contact with that God is going to put in your life in order to for you to reach them and to empower them because he has a plan for lots of things. I'm excited. Amen. Amen. And you should be too. John, God loves you so much. And the Lord says, my son, I am bringing in the good things in your life. Do good and good things will come. John, keep on sowing because God has called you to be a sower and he's called you to be generous. And there's an incredible harvest and there's a, an incredible promotion that is coming in your life. But though right now you may feel like you're in a lot of stress and a lot of pressure, the Lord says when he takes you up into that spot, it's going to be different because you're going to be seated in God in heavy places and you're going to be doing twice as much as you do now. The Lord is bringing double the anointing in your life. Um, John, God loves you so much. And the Lord is really blessing you and your family at this time with healing and joy. And John also, God says, my son, I'm sending in a flood over your life and, and you are going to overflow. And the last thing, I, I, here's a verse in um, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13 to 14. And check it out. God bless you, John. All right. Awesome. So this next word is for Shanae Barnard. Uh, before we, we get to Shanae, I just want to encourage you, please comment uh, and like our page and share it even on your own page. Um, and, and you know how prophetic words work. What the Lord does, He releases mandates out of heaven. Each one of those mandates has a provision of God connected uh, to that mandate. And so where you are right now, anywhere, you can sit there and you can say, yes, Lord, that's for me. I receive it right now. And the moment you receive it, you don't only receive uh, the word, but you also receive the anointing that will bring about the shift of God in your life. Uh, but you also uh, receive the provision that comes with that word. And so that's that's an important thing. And so I want to encourage you, this way you are right now. This is not what you're doing it say, Lord. I draw, I receive right now, I receive that fire of God, I receive that anointing, I draw uh, on that. You know, like a, go, a guy that he, when he roused the boat like that, that that's how you kind of like pull that and you draw that anointing of God. Remember, when we do something in the natural, then what actually happens, there is no... Um, uh, this unity in our in our man, you know. Remember, you are body, your soul, and a spirit. And so, you got to do things with your body so that you can come in, a, in with your body in agreement with what's happening in the spirit realm, so that you can receive of God. Okay. So this next word uh, is for Shanae uh, Barnard. Uh, and so Shanae, the the Lord is putting a cloak on you, and I see on the cloak of the Father. And so the Lord says, you are no longer rejected. You're no longer isolated but my cloak uh, is upon you and i see how you just find your identity and how a massive confidence and a boldness like a like a lion is coming inside of you and so the lord says as i'm healing you and i'm am I healing your your image that you have of yourself and you start to like really really love yourself then you'll be able uh, to go and you can penetrate in these places where you're going to go and speak to people where they might not love you but because of your boldness uh, and uh, the love of God and the fire of God and the passion of God inside of you. You're going to release the word of God and you're going to see breakthrough of the breakthrough. I also felt that the Lord is giving you a uh, new technology. He's releasing into your life a new uh, creativity. And so the Lord says, dance before me. And even as you dance, I see how all these chains just fall, fall off of your life. Uh, so now God is doing an, an amazing work in your life. Don't, don't give up. Awesome. So uh, this next word is for Linda Baranen. Uh, and so, Linda, I just want to say uh, greetings here from South Africa to, to you and your church there in South Africa. And we, we bless you. We bless your church and all your elders. And all of us uh, is going to minister to you right now uh, because we really want to uh, release a blessing on you. But more than that, we want you also to bless us. And we want you to release a blessing of God because we desire to have an international ministry where we can touch thousands of people all over the world with the word of God. So we receive it, uh, you know, we, we trust that you can uh, release that blessing on our life. Okay, but I want to tell you what the Lord showed me. The Lord showed me uh, how at your church, uh, two things. The first one was how 
a lot of people leave your church and a lot of new people come. And so the Lord says, I'm cleaning the barn. It's like a, a tree where you cut off all those old branches. And the Lord says the ones I had a chance and I had another chance and I had another chance and they were not willing to shift into this new that the Lord is doing. And because they were not willing to shift, the Lord says, I'm cutting them off and I'm going to release new people. And with those new people is going to come new provision and new resources. And so this is not a day. Uh, to, to be sad and to mourn for those that leave. But this is a day to rejoice because it's like a freedom. It's like the shackles are being shed in your church. And so the Lord says, you're going to see a multiplication in the provision. You're going to see a multiplication in the numbers. And then the second thing that the Lord said, he said that everyone in the church is going to come into unity. They're going to come into agreement with what God says. And the Lord says, I'm establishing a headquarters for my angelic host to be there in your church and they're going to go out in the city and they're going to do work and they're going to bring, it's like hunter angels, it's going to bring thousands of people uh, into the kingdom of God uh, and they, they need intercessors and I need people to send them out. And so the Lord says, that is what I'm establishing. It's like a, like a military headquarters uh, for the angelic that the Lord is establishing uh, there in your church. And you're going to see how the heavens open up and now a massive amount of anointing and provision is released. And at some point, uh, you're going to say, well, what do, do I do with all this stuff? And, uh, and I'm getting so busy. Uh, but the Lord says, uh, do not waver on standing for the truth. Do not compromise. Don't uh, preach a message that's soft and nice on the ears, that tickles the ears. But bring the fire of God. And so the Lord says uh, to your church that I am baptizing you with my fire. There's a holiness. There's a fear of the Lord. There's a wisdom of God that's being released. You know, that scripture says uh, uh, the, the, the fear of the Lord or the beginning of the fear of the Lord is the wisdom of God. And I tell you what, you need wisdom to be able to handle all that resources that the Lord is going to uh, give to you. And so humble yourself before God and fear the Lord. And you're going to see massive resources released to you. God bless you. Amen. Huh? Wow. Okay. So I saw exactly the same. I saw these big buildings. Um, some of the buildings was very low and some of these buildings were huge. It was actually going into heaven. Okay. So and it's almost like God is saying you need to, there's areas and there's, you know, people that doesn't want to grow. Just you know, focus on the big things, focus on the big things, because these building actually reach into heaven and it's just going to grow and it's just going to draw from heaven. And some areas, some buildings, some places of your ministry is going to grow heavenly places and it's going to expand and some is just going to be low. Focus on the growth. Focus on, um, like Pastor Joseph said, focus on the truth. Focus on yes. the growth because it's now it's the time for people to grow. Now it's the time for people to hear the truth about God's word. So just be blessed. Be blessed into heaven and just grab and grab and just know that God really, really loves you. Be blessed. I learned now the Lord loves you and he cares tremendously about you and your ministry. Uh, the picture that I saw was of an acoustic guitar and uh, the worship leader played and the first time it failed, the second time it failed, the third time it went nice. And that became a very, very nice melody. It's all about getting it right. It is, don't worry if there's mistakes, don't focus on the mistake, but also don't care to write your own songs, especially if there's, I feel there's somebody, you just need to release and trust them and say, it is fine, do it. Even if he fails two times, the third time will be massive. It will be big. Pray about this. Get directly from the Holy Spirit to guide your footsteps, because this is a very important thing. The, the worship is, there's something the Lord wants to change and shift around and and just pray for clarity on that, and then you will see the breakthrough will definitely come. Be blessed. Hey, Alinda Bohannon. So the Holy Spirit showed me how you were walking in this desert and how, you know, it looked dry and like you were walking, walking for such a long way, then eventually you reach this oasis. And you felt in your heart, you need to tell people of this because you know so many people walking around in this desert and they're not aware of it. And then when you, when you were spending time in this oasis, you, well, you're like, well, I got to tell people about this. But then you realize you can take this oasis with you. You can, it's like a, a canal or a pathway you're making 
from the oasis to all these people. And then the people see this pathway or this river that follows you in the desert from this oasis. So it's like sand and this like one stream of water following you. And the people are like, can I have a drink? And you give them a drink. And then they keep on asking for a drink. But you feel, no, I'm going to stop giving you a drink. You need to come with me so that I can teach you yes. how to be a part of this oasis yes. so that a river can be formed behind you. And I just see millions of people, how you teach them to become a part of this oasis and how this you, they get one with the oasis and then they teach others and it just multiplies and multiplies and multiplies. And it's just like this oasis is God and God's kingdom and heaven and all everything people thirst for and hunger for is like it is satisfied by God. But they need to learn to get it from him directly not through people the whole time but they have the ability to go to him directly and that their thirst may be satisfied for the rest of their lives and i really feel that you are going to be the teacher for that god is going to use you to teach those people and those teacher those people are going to teach people and i just see so much multiplication of god's kingdom from you to others and thank you others and just keep on going and going and going and when you put the kingdom of god first everything else will be added onto you and onto the people that is with you in your ministry amen amen yes um alinda god loves you so much the lord has given you um, a rod and a staff and then he's given you so much support you know, just as um, um, Aaron's rod and stuff, it, it, uh, it blossomed. And I felt that the Lord says that he's bringing in the flowers. He's bringing the anointing. And he is just bringing in those angels and chariots. And there's going to be a divine healing anointing that's going to become come upon your church and your and your household and your life. Um, and Alinda, the Lord also says that anything that has been kept like, um, that has been contained like, like a water bottle or something that um, like the anointing of God, the Lord said that that is breaking that stronghold of, um, of that religious spirit is breaking. And there's going to be an overflow of the Holy spirit. That's going to be seen in the ministry. God is, sending a mighty, mighty tidal wave at this moment. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. This next word is for Natalie. Hey, Natalie, it's so good to see you. I will not see you. God loves you so much. Um, Natalie, the picture God showed me was how he is actually feeding you spaghetti. And I was like, Lord, what does this mean? <laughs> and I felt that the Lord says, you, you know that incredible verse where it says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I felt that the Lord Lord says he's bringing in that joy in your life and you are going to be a fireball for his presence. Natalie, the Lord is also giving you a presence to sing. The Lord has given you an anointing to be a mother and to mother people and to um to, to and to just lead them to, to Jesus. And also you're also going to be a pointer and you are going to point Jesus, uh, sorry, point to people the direction of Jesus. Um, Natalie, God loves you. And the Lord is really bringing in an incredible revelation and dream in your life. So believe in it. And remember that with through faith, you can move mountains. God bless you, Natalie. Hey, Natalie, I just saw, you know, that that uh, a parable with the uh, where Jesus fed with the five fishes, uh, and then the five bread and the two fish. So I felt uh, fed all those people. And how there was a multiplication. And I just felt that the Lord is going to bring that multiplication into you, him. And the Lord is calling on you uh, not to trust in man or your own wisdom or a situation or to come through. But trust in the Lord to bring that multiplication to your life. God really, really loves you. I also see just a burst of energy that the Lord is putting into you. And it's like a healing and a burst of energy that Lord, the Lord is re releasing. God bless you, Natalie. We love you. And it's good to see you tonight. So the next one is for Premla. And so Premla, uh, I just felt that the Lord is giving you direction in your life. And so you've tried this one and you've tried that one. But the Lord says, I'm, I'm putting like, you know, like a horse got those two little, uh, little flaps on the sides of their eyes. Yeah, and, just focus. and I felt that the Lord says, daughter, simplicity and focus is right now uh, the answer for your life. I'm releasing my fire on you. I'm releasing my anointing. And I see how the Lord is directing your, your desire for the thing that he has for your life. And you know, the desire in your life is almost like a compass. And when you come into the presence of God and when you worship before the Lord, then your desire is tuned 
to turn in the direction that's the direction that God has for your life. And I felt that is what the Lord is doing in your life. And you're going to go through uh, that gate and you're going to see the glory of God. And I see the uh, east gate. And so in the scripture, it talks about the east gate. That's where the glory of God comes in. And I see that each east gate in your life is opening up. And it means that the Lord is just really bringing a God time, God uh, favor, God ordained anointing in your life. And so I declare over your life, breakthrough, 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 and victory, uh, that's your portion. God bless you, Premna. Amen. Premna, also a short word for you. God is saying to you, about a given gift, um, definitely pray, definitely prophesying. He says you need to you, you need to need to move more with praying and prophesying. Okay, so the next word is for Becca, Becca for share. Okay, so there's um, maybe there's a I feel that there's a fear in in your life where you where there's uncertainty about decision you need to make about direction that you need to take. But God says, be still and know that He's God, and He will direct you into the right direction. I actually see this arrow with this red light just pointing. You know, like, so just give it to God, just surrender to God, and be still, and He will show you clear, clear clear direction on where you need to go and how you need to take that step that you want to take. Be blessed, Becca. Hi, Becca. The Lord loves you, cares about you uh, very much. And uh, I just really felt that you need to look up. You need to make a declaration every day to say, God is my source. Yes. There's things in your mindset which is attached to this is my source and that is, to, uh, that is my source, uh, which is not where you focus on, but that is creating a lot of challenges. So I really encourage you every day, make a declaration and say, Lord is my source. God, the Father is my source and I rely on Him. And then become expectant and the more and more, uh, if it takes time, it takes time. But the more you work with it, the more you'll see God will open doors. But the, the whole thing that you need to focus on is just to create a different mindset to rely on God more rather than on your own abilities and say, but yes, I can do it. You can do a lot of things, but God says, I am your source. You're not your own source. Be blessed, Becca. Yes. Be blessed, Becca. This next word is for Ruth Pierce. Okay, Ruth. So just as Jesus said, the light pierces the darkness. So the Holy Spirit do you pierce everyone that is searching and seeking and you know you're really gonna be a revelation to people when they have conversations with you it's literally that like they would receive revelation by just chatting with you and listening to how you speak and what you do because you are jesus's light that is shining and you will pierce the darkness god has ordained you as a light on this planet for his children and i just really feel god says my daughter i'm gonna use you i want you to go and to be a light for people and being a light means so many things it doesn't just mean you know walking around and chatting it just means being and and feeling and being one with god because when you as a light are connected to the main source you know the main light which is god you're going to keep on shining you're never going to burn out because you keep on spending time you are really locking yourself with god's presence and who he is and how can you ever burn out or run out of energy or you know just be tired to be alive i really feel god says my daughter i'm my, i'm pouring out my grace upon you i will empower you to go beyond your own ability so just start thinking that i'm not going to do this out of my own strength i'm going to do this out of god's strength and with Anything you try to do in your life, whether it be work, home, friends, family, I will empower you if you allow me to empower you to go beyond your own ability. Amen. Amen, Ruth. You know, the Lord has given you an anointing of the fear of the Lord. And people may think, oh, it's because like we're scared of God now. Um, well, yes, but no, it actually sort of means that <laughs> it means that he is our father and I'm aware of it and I'm going to honor him and I'm and he's right here in the room with me and I'm going to walk in his righteousness. And that's what you're going to do, Ruth. God has called you to walk on the righteous path and God has a divine plan for you. Ruth, also the Lord says that he 
is sending in bread in your life and that normally means like the word the lord is sending in the word in your life where you're going to be equipped and god's timing is so perfect uh, the, the picture god showed me was how you were kind of trusting god for some people in your life to come to you maybe people that are um, off seas or or very far away i felt the lord says that he's going to bring them to you in your life in his perfect time so just be patient with him just sit in a seat of rest and Ruth the Lord is also preparing an incredible message in your heart that you are going to share in a completely unique way it could even be through painting or or in poetry or, or something but I feel the Lord is putting an incredible message in your heart God bless you Ruth Jose. Hi Ruth uh, Joseph here so it's awesome to see you tonight then uh, on our um, feet, and that's why it was very exciting for me uh, that you, yeah, and that's why I asked you if you would like to receive word. Uh, we just want to bless you, and uh, even your ministry, and also the ministry uh, through Christian International was such a blessing to me, and a blessing to our church, and a lot of what's happening in our lives is because of the seeds that uh, you have sown into our lives, and so we just honor, and we and you bless you for that. Um, so what the Lord showed me, he showed me uh, you in a room and there's bread there, but the bread is stale. It's like old bread, bread that was baked long time ago. Uh, and I saw how you and your husband move into a new realm, into a new area. And you prepared the way for a lot of other people to follow after you. And so the Lord is raising you up uh, as once. Uh, that will see into the heavenlies, that will see into the future and be able to pull the technology of the future uh, into uh, this place. And so uh, when you sometimes feel a little bit odd or isolated or a little bit rejected or separate, uh, do not fear about that because the Lord is actually bringing it about because he wants to shift you into a new place so the rest can then uh, have you prepare a way, you make a way, you, you are a pioneer for the rest to then come in after you. I also felt that there's a massive generosity that's going to flow through your life. The Lord is putting on your life a business anointing. And so we, many others, has this uh, massive spiritual anointing to, to prophesy and to preach the word. I felt that the Lord says uh, that you are going to be established uh, as a voice uh, in business. You're going to have the wisdom of God uh, upon you. And with that is coming massive authority, also an anointing to, to intercede. I see also those young uh, children of yours uh, rising up. Uh, with the Lord, uh, the word of the Lord uh, in their mouths, and I saw a, 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 a silver trumpet that the Lord has given to each one of them uh, to blow along with your silver trumpet to blow in unity uh, as a family. And but that trumpet is not a trumpet of ministry; it's a trumpet of business. And so the Lord is really going to bless you uh, to be a guide for the resources of heaven uh, to come through. Uh, so Ruth, we are. Uh, I just want you uh, to to receive uh, the, that calls of fire. Remember in uh, Isaiah chapter six, it talks there about uh, that the, the 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 Lord took the the coal uh, from the fire and put it uh, on the mouth uh, of Isaiah. And I felt that is what the Lord uh, is doing also uh, to your whole family. He's cleansing you uh, because He's going to multiply resources to you, and so He needs a, a vessel that is ready and prepared to be able to handle it. Uh, handle it. God bless you. We love you. And have a fabulous um, day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. We're going to do a corporate word. <laughs> awesome. Uh, uh, we're going to shift now into our corporate word. Uh, I'm very excited about it. And so I want to uh, ask everyone, how many are we on, on the live? We are 23 people uh, on uh, live now. Shannon is going to record this word and we're going to post it probably on Thursday night again. Um, and so I want you to right now where you are. Uh, if you can stand with me, it will be nice. But you know, when, uh, when you are a sumo wrestler, hey? a sumo wrestler, uh, the whole thing about sumo wrestlers, is the one sumo is going to try to push the other sumo all over so they can lose their balance. And so what you got to do is you got to seat yourself like a sumo wrestler in the realm of the spirit. And then you can receive that word and then you seat yourself on that seat of authority. And so at one stage in my life, I, I would every time I sit, if I sit in a car or I sit to eat or I sit at my office and I sit down, I say, Lord, I sit in your seat of rest. I'm, I'm a sumo wrestler of the spirit and I'm going to push in the spirit. And so I want you to just where you are, just receive uh, that position, that posture uh, that the Lord uh, is. Because we want to shift something right now uh, with this corporate word uh, that the Lord is uh, about to release. And so let me tell you what the Lord said to me. 
He said to me that the, the enemy wants to divide and he wants to conquer. But the Lord says, my church shall come together in unity. Uh, they shall be uh, gatherings uh, together. Uh, they shall hold hands. They shall stand together. So they shall love uh, one another. And even as they come together in unity, I'm going to release the fire and the revival of God. And so the, the key to this revival is the unity of God's saints. And the Lord says, uh, I'm bringing uh, such a big fire. It's you know, like a bonfire that you can see from Malt uh, and from kilometers far. You can see this bonfire. And that is the picture of the fire that the Lord is releasing in each one of the congregations where people are willing to say, we're going to defy uh, the instruction of the enemy and we're going to listen to the instruction of God and we're going to come together in unity and we're going to love one another. And so we are right now. I want you to make a decision. I'm going to connect. People got so used to be disconnected. They became lazy. And so there's a discipline in connecting. It's not nice to connect. It's nice to be isolated. But I want to tell you, the Lord says, I want my children to connect. You know, when, when the people skydive and, and they fall down the sky now, then, and they start grabbing at, uh, each other and hold each other, and then they make those beautiful shapes and the one holds a leg and an arm and then they make, you know, you can see all these beautiful shapes as they fall down. And in the same way, I felt that the church fell out of the plane, but they just scattered all. And now they're all going to come together and they're going to hold together so that they can hold the line. And so it's also in the army. You know, the biggest thing the enemy can do against the army is to, to break the line. Uh, but uh, we as a church has to stand together and to say, Lord, we're going to hold the line. And I see there's a lot of weak people around us. People that have no faith, they just got fear, they're sickly, they got no energy. And so the Lord says, more than ever, we have to stand together so that we can be a protection uh, for those sickly people. Uh, I, I think that this, the, what is that animals, uh, the caribou, no, it's the caribou that stands in a, in a circle like that. No. Yeah, I think in, in, in North America, uh, they got these animals. It's, it's not the caribou. No, man, it's not buffalo. It's like, like kind of hairy animals. I just can't remember what, what they're called. Sorry? That could be yaks. Yeah. It could be the yaks, but I know they stand in a little circle and they protect the young in the middle. And I, and, uh, sorry? Somebody's getting musk or A musk? Yeah. Okay, sorry. We are from Africa. We know about lions and giraffe and elephants and rhinos and things like that. So those things are a little bit foreign to us. But I saw how they were standing. They were protecting the young. And that is the picture that the Lord is showing me tonight. That we as generals, we as uh, adults, as, as sons of God on this earth, have to stand together, lock in, and we have to protect our young. And I saw uh, in 2018, there was a lot of people that became saved and they turned their lives to Jesus. And now they're kind of like uh, uh, wanting to fall over and lose their faith or, you know, uh, but the, the Lord says we got to protect those people so that they can uh, stay uh, the course and they can grow up to be sons in the kingdom of God. God bless you. Amen. Okay, so this is also a corporate word um, <clears throat> where I feel that the Lord is saying that we need to um, we need to become the living, walking word. Okay, people need to look at us and they need to experience the word. They need to experience Jesus. They need to experience God. They need to experience the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of people that is um, around us that is living in fear, like Pastor Joseph said. There's a lot of people that lives in hatred and they're pushing people away and they are just greedy and they just want me, 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 myself, and they are not wanting good for other people. So we need to be that love to people. We need to be that humility to people. We need to project that kindness to people. We need to let people realize who God really is. So us as believers, we need to change a believer's heart. When they just look at us, they need to see, wow, but I also want of that. We need to be walking ministry people on earth. We need to change our hearts. We need to change our hearts in such a way that like Pastor Joseph said, we need to be in unity. We need to stop thinking about what can I do for myself? We need to stop thinking, what can I do for 
other people? What can I do to change someone else's life through Christ in me? How can I change someone's life today by just being kind, by just smiling, by just not saying hurtful words? We need to let people heal and we need to let people go more into heaven. We need to let people realize that they can reach heaven on earth because that is God's promise to us. We can reach heaven while we are on earth. So that is what we need to do, stand in unity, love, humility, kindness, and let's change unbelievers' hatred hearts. I don't know about you, but I get a lot of um, unbelievers at the moment attacking me, and um, it's, it's, it's hectic. Like people are not scared to say anymore that they don't believe in God, and it's, it's, it's making me very sad, but we need to just be that mirror image of God. We need to just project that, that, that glory that God is transforming us into that glory by living in him and by moving closer and closer to God and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Okay, God is very good. God is awesome. God cares a lot about all of us. And the picture that I saw was of a, a big, massive door like a floodgate. And the enemy tried to force it close, hold it close. But it God helps us to force it open. And as it falls, it creates a very big shaking on this whole earth. And a lot of Christians, a lot of spirits of God gets released on this the face of the earth the enemy will not be able to stand it there's not going to be there's a lot of things that we get uh, taught in the church that is watered down to keep us inactive and keep us so that we are not effective christians a lot of those things are going to disappear they're going to just like water in the sand they will go and disappear and the true word of god will be made manifest the sons of God will be made manifest. The word that will be released will activate so many people. And that will give a lot of people understanding. Because there's a lot of people that don't understand how God works in, in, uh, in his children. So a lot of those things will dissipate. And then the power of God will be so made manifest that people will no longer say, yeah, we don't, we're not sure. They'll be convinced. So there's coming a big, big change in this earth. We need to pray for it. We need to stand. We need to believe. And we need to see it. We need to see it so that we pray for it. And the more we pray for it, the more we push. And God will release at the right time. Be blessed. Amen. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so, um the Lord showed me how each of us was sitting at his throne. You know, like when a dad or somebody would be sitting on a couch and the child would come there by the dad's feet and play or like with cars or dolls or draw something. And, you know, um, I just really feel the Holy Spirit is saying, what is different than us going to God at his throne and just sitting there and spending time? And it's just so interesting for me why a child would want to draw at a dad's feet and not somewhere in his room. Why would he want to play, you know, here by his dad instead of doing it somewhere else? He wants to be there. And I really feel God says, I, I want us to have that desire. I want you to have the desire to come to me and just be here. Because you know that you become what you behold. If you behold negativity, if you behold destruction, if you behold, you know, Everything that is not good, you start becoming it. It's what your hearts and your mouth runs over off. But if you keep on beholding God and spending time with him, would you start thinking like that person? I mean, I've seen a, a dad and a son, and the son is exactly like the dad. He speaks like the dad. He walks like the dad. I mean, he even talks like the dad. And I really feel that God is saying, I want you to be like me. And when we spend time with him and intimately just you know, when we were with him and we talked to him, you know, to know God. God says that he knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. That knew means to intimately know somebody. And I really feel that God is calling each and every one of us to come. He's inviting us to come so that we can intimately know him because he already knows us, everything about us. But he is granting us the opportunity to get to know him. And that is absolutely amazing yes. that he would grant us that opportunity and that he made a way through Jesus's resurrection and death so that we can come to him directly each and every one of us at at our own time through the day we don't have to go to somebody to get to him we can just come to him and I just feel that he's inviting us to come to him and that that is the main message is to come to me 
All who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Come to me with praises and thanksgiving, and I will open up my heavens upon you. God bless you. Yes, I am in agreement. Yes, amen. God is so good. All right, for those who are watching, I want you to smile because Jesus loves you. Give me a big smile. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And God is really equipping his people at this incredible time. And when the Bible says that we can do anything through our God, we can do anything, any skill, any talent, and we shall excel of it when the moment we come in agreement with God and we say, yes, Lord, I'm going to put in the mighty work for your mighty ideas and plans that you have for me. God is standing in incredible waves of the Holy Spirit and the fear of the Lord is coming back. And do you know how hungry the world is for the supernatural? How hungry the world is for in a supernatural healing and a supernatural miracle. And we are called to be the vessels. You are called to be the vessel of that incredible supernatural move. And God is not going to be the red telephone anymore where the pastor or the specific prophet or the specific person has the power and glory. It's going to be common people. It's going to be normal mothers and normal fathers. It's going to be ordinary small children that is going to carry the, the glory of God. Even very, very old people. God is going to use all ages. It's not just going to be the new young generation. It's going to be the old generation. And also God is bringing an incredible healing for your teeth. If anyone is struggling with maybe you have a cavity or a missing tooth or are you having some sore teeth at the moment, God is healing you right now of it right before you brush your teeth or even if you want a little bit of a whitening right before you brush your teeth i want that i want you to look in the mirror and say thank you lord for this healing that you're bringing because i want to be a vessel of joy and i want to smile with your confidence and also the holy spirit you got to know that the holy spirit is not prideful the holy spirit is not boastful and people has been carrying a little bit of this pride and god is shaking this off of us we are going to walk in this humidity um we're going to be humble. God has created, has created us to be humble. We're going to be very, very powerful, but also very, very humble. God is going to bring a face-to-face -face anointing at the time. God loves you so much, and God is so proud of you. Keep on walking in his presence and in his love. God bless you. Say yes to him. God bless you. Yes, yes. 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 Amen. Uh, so I want to encourage you. Uh, Revelation, Acts chapter 3, 19. It talks there about times of refreshing as coming from the presence of God. And so even as you are right now there, I just want you to receive the refreshing of God. Lord, thank you that we refresh us, uh, refresh us today, uh, that you put your spirit in your anointing oil, and we just draw on that refreshment. And then verse 24, the Lord gives us this uh, promise. He says that Jesus has to remain in heaven until the times of restoration of all things. Uh, uh, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets. And so uh, what the Lord is doing, he's using prophetic people to speak of the restoration of the things that God wants to do on this earth before Jesus can come back. And I can tell you what, Jesus is not coming back tomorrow. I know people like to say he's coming soon, but I can tell you there's a big work that the Lord is doing on the earth and he's calling on a church to arise. And so many believers say, no, I just want to spend time with God. I don't want to actually be uh, doing anything for God. I just want to spend time. And, you know, there's a lot of people say, oh, I just want to be in a garden uh, with God. And, you know, and that's nice. But, you know, when when the new heaven and the new earth come, it says they, they come a city now, out of the heavens and it comes. That, that's what the Lord uh, said. Now, and he says this city is going to be the place uh, where all uh, the, the believers are going to dwell together in unity. And so a lot of times we want to isolate ourselves and say, no, I want to just spend time in the garden. And it's absolutely it's wonderful. Spend time with God. But you need to come also and be yes. part of the city because the city is our future. That's the place where we're going to all together. The scripture says that there is our army that is rising up. And Jesus is on his horse and he's riding yes. in the front of this army. And we want to be part of this army. And so to be part of the army, you got to rise up. There's going to be action that you have to take and so uh, i told the the kids today i had a little bit of a, we had a little bit of a family meeting today and we were talking about what are we doing to exercise our spiritual muscles now and so there were some commitments made with each one of the kids of what they're going to do to exercise those spiritual muscles and i want to tell you what are you doing to exercise those spiritual muscles because a time uh, of uh, 
<laughs> you know, the battle is coming and you want to know how to load your weapon and you want to know how to aim and you want to know how to shoot or run or dive or duck or whatever you need to do. You need to get that spiritual muscles of your groan. Okay, so enough preaching tonight. We love you guys. Thank you that we could give you a, a corporate prophetic word. God bless you. Uh, so this next word is for wow. Marnes Adolfel. Uh, and so uh, Marnes uh, the Lord is loving you so much. I saw a holiday, a family holiday, and you and there was like family members, I don't know if it's kids or whatever, at the beach, and they were just swimming, and it was just wonderful. And then inside of you is like this ball of stress because you worry about the finances and you worry about how all your business stuff is going to work out. And then you got to rest and have a family holiday. <laughs> no, but I just felt that the Lord says, come into my rest and trust me. I'm going to give you your breakthrough, but it's important that you don't only focus on that financial uh, uh, breakthrough, but you also have to focus uh, on your family. God uh, bless you, Manus. Amen. Manus, I see you. Um, God is giving you these new boots, and it's almost like you are, um, you think you're going to face a difficult situation. You think that thing that's right in front of you is going to be difficult, but with this new goods, uh, with this new godly boots, it's going to be easy. You're just going to have victory over the situation. So just trust God and go in with it, with God's tools, with his word, with his prayer, and his anointing and his strength. You got this. Be blessed. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Marnes. The next word is for Christine Evans. Christine, the Lord loves you and he cares a lot about you. The picture that I saw was uh, you were climbing a mountain and you planted it on top of the mountain. It's been a hard road, but you will conquer. The Lord is with you. The Holy Spirit is with you so that it will give you the strength. Keep on. You will conquer. When you conquer, you will look like it's a very beautiful picture, but in your future, in your destiny, it brings a big This is what I mean. you need to climb. But remember, God says you will be victorious. You won't quit. You won't give up. The Lord will send his provision for you at the right time when you need it. So focus on the Lord and not just on your strength and ability, but ask, Lord, I need this. I need that to fulfill the destiny. Be blessed, Christine. Okay, Christine, so, um, you know, um, just like Sarah, um, was, she was barren, really, really. And um, God told Abram, you're going to have a son. But Abram was like, uh, my wife is old and here and so. And then she got a baby and everything happened. <laughs> and then we moved to the New Testament. And there was Elizabeth and her husband was Zachariah. No. Zachariah. Oh, yeah, I was right. Uh, Zachariah. Yeah. And um, an angel appeared to Zachariah and said, so Elizabeth was also barren, and an angel <laughs> appeared to Zachariah and said, you will have a son. Elizabeth will be pregnant. And he was like, but uh, Elizabeth is very old in her days right now. It is really, it's not going to happen. Well, the angel said, it's God's will, so it's going to happen, but I'm going to close your mouth um, for a little <laughs> while. And you're not going to be able to speak. And so Elizabeth got pregnant. And so I read that story yesterday, and I was like, well... I am sure God shut Zachariah's mouth because he immediately spoke against the word that God gave. I mean, God just said, oh, I'm going to give you a son and Elizabeth is going to be pregnant. And you just said, but you, you just doubted me. And we're like, I'm going to give it to you anyway. I have mercy. I'm going to shut you, you know, your vocal cords and everything for a while so that it can happen. And so that you can and so that you cannot speak against the word. So, Christine, for the promises that God has for you, which is a lot, when he speaks to you, be very careful over what you think of the word and over what you say. Always be aware to re just receive it and say, yes, God, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. And Shannon, I receive it. I receive it. I am two minutes now. But just receive God's word and be positive about it and just speak life into what he says. That is actually the instruction. I mean. Amen. Awesome. You know, there's a funny, I love that part in the Bible where it mentions, you know, <laughs> where it mentions when, when um, I, I, I'm sure when, when Abraham said, so my wife is so, I'm very, very old and my wife is very wise. <laughs> they mention the word wise so you can see that Abraham has a lot of wisdom. Uh, <laughs> so 
Awesome word. This next word is for Amber. Amber, God loves you so much. And the Lord is giving you wisdom in your life. And the Lord says that you're going to grow. You're going to grow old and you're going to live a long life because you are going to honor. You honor your parents because you honor your parents. They shall be an open heaven. So keep on honoring because that's an incredible gift. And with faith, um, with, with faith, we, we can't do anything. I felt that the Lord is giving you, pumping you up with faith so that you will be more um that you'll be more full of faith and you'll be more able to do incredible things the lord is also blessing your feet wherever you go there shall be favor there shall be promotion that's a promise from god there shall be an abundant blessing and when you come into the room sometimes people is not going to receive you because you know sometimes people are funny but i just feel the lord says you are not a servant to people or man you are a servant of the living god and you shall walk in his righteousness and and you shall speak righteous words and the Lord is placing an incredible call upon your tongue and he's given you an incredible message that you're going to speak and it's going to be pure and it's going to be holy. You are going to really encourage people to rise up in faith. Um, Amber, God loves you so much. Keep on being a bubble of joy. God bless you. Hey, I, Amber, uh, you know, so I saw a, a picture, you know, a Tarzan and Jane. No, so I saw Jane was holding onto that rope. He was going like, I don't know how Jane do it, but uh, then and then she went and then she left the rope and she fell into that river. And the Lord is saying, uh, "Where you had to, you were holding onto something. You're just gonna let go, and you're gonna trust the Lord, and you're gonna go into His river, and the Lord is just going to flood you with His presence, flood you with His provision, flood you with His purpose and His vision for your life, and it's." The Lord is, uh, you know, uh, creating a space for you where you can just completely give give over to Him, and you're gonna see how faithful the Lord is to supply to you and everything that you need. I also see education coming to you, and how you learn new things, how you get a certificate or some kind of course that you do, and it just really shifts your desire uh, in your life, and how that also brings a new level of provision into your life. Uh, the Lord. Uh, he's putting his focus and his aim on some of those fa family members in your life to bring them uh, into the kingdom of God. And so just keep on trusting me and give them to God. I see there's one family member that is so worried about uh, if they're not going to go to heaven or hell. And I felt that the Lord says, you know what? You've spoken to them now. So just give them to God and trust me. And the Lord says, I'll send someone and I'll organize things for you for them to be able to come into the kingdom of God. You just stand in faith and keep on praying. God bless you. Amen. Next word is for Simone. Okay. Um, Simone Milder. Um, okay. So I see you standing and it's like just chaos around you. People are running and shouting and they don't know where to go this way, that way, this way, that way. And it's, it's, it's almost like God is saying it's, it's your family around you. It's your work people around you. They are all, you know, they are, they are in, in stress and they, they, are, they don't know what to do. They don't know what choices to make. And it's almost like you are calm because you have this godly wisdom inside of you and you are going to help your family members to just be calm. You're going to help them just to, you know, just go to the Lord and just to, to just not stress about this and just to, you know, get their answers from God. So you have this special gift of just, you know, just calm me peace. You, you are definitely a peacemaker and you are where everyone's just chaotic and running around and don't know what to do. You're going to move in there and that chaos is just going to be settled with God's wisdom that's going to speak through you and with your prayers. You've got a, um, I feel that you have an anointing of prayer inside of you yes. and that when you just, just, when you just pray for people, it's just almost like, it just calms them so much. With God inside of you, you have that peace that just flows through you, that river of peace that just flows through you. Touch the people around you and let that chaos and that decision-making just be, you know, blessed with God's peace and with his, you know, wisdom. Um, be blessed. Amen. Amen. Hi, Simone. My challenge, keep me. Anyway, the Lord loves you and cares about you. Um, the Lord is sending you somebody to care for, not to understand them, to care for them and love them. 
uh, that is going to create a lot of ability within you. I just see it's like a, a stretch ball. God is stretching you a bit so that your capacity increases a lot. It's going to give you a lot of wisdom. Um, the Lord is really going to reward you for this, but it, it, it's going to be challenging. So rather focus on and just pray for the Holy Spirit for clarity so that you, you've got the understanding what to do, not the understanding how to understand them because uh, that in itself will be a mystery. But just pray for the Holy Spirit every day for wisdom. The Lord wants to give you wisdom and tremendous wisdom. Um, but yeah, just pray and believe. Be blessed. Amen. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, and if there are children, we are very honored to be a part of this team and to be able to minister for the kingdom of God. I am very honored. Um, yes, and we just love, you know, doing God's will and really, really trusting for God to move and to heal people and to really bring his word and to bring breakthrough. So just say, I receive this. God's got this. Yes. I receive it. I receive it. You know, God is on the move. He's really busy with so many things. And when yes. we start fixing our eyes on him and what he's doing and not, you know, focusing on everything going on down here, but really just start giving everything to God. So thank you so much for being live with us, these 18 wonderful people and all the people that will be watching this after the live. Um, you guys are really awesome. And thank you for being a part of this. We honor you. We love you. We are going to go to bed now. So have a very good evening. Some of you have a very good day. I'm not sure. you. Some of you are, are in other countries. Um, God bless you. Have a good night.